Hey, BJ, very basic Bible. As you notice down here, screen's all fuzzy, gets a little less up here. All I got is cheap lights from Walmart, but that's not the point. The point is we're going to go to uh, do us a quick Bible study topic. Going to look up a word or phrase or uh, idea or mm, passage in the Bible. Look at it for a little while, search it out. Unlike Bible study alongs, which take a long time, I take my time. Unlike the Ruth Bible study, which I go through very meticulously detailed. This one, we're just trying to get a general fill, a general overview. All right, guys, let's share that screen. Okay. I was looking in Ezra on the last one. Let's go look up another place. Let's see. Let's just do something quite random. Joshua. Chapter 13. Let's see what we come up with. A few of them. I have um, a few of them I have uh, uh, in queued que up beforehand. A few, some of them I don't. I'm just like, hey, let's just look and see. I already see something that caught my eye. Now, Joshua was old and advanced in years. Now, Joshua was old and advanced in years. Okay. Now, when Joshua was very old, when Joshua was old and advanced in years, when Joshua had grown old, now Joshua was old, advanced in age, right there. Oh, Genesis, the, the, yeah, yeah, okay. When Joshua was an old man. Okay, the more, as you can see, here, I'll leave my face up there. I'm wrong. I'll move it down there. The more literal versions have old and advanced in years. The more word for word. If it's word for word, now Joshua was old and advanced in years. They try to relate, they try to translate the exact Hebrew word into an exact English equivalent. They try to take a Hebrew phrase and make it the exact English phrase. Okay, well, that's word for word. So we can see old and advanced in years, old and advanced in years. The NET, which is like, a half and half, and the NABRE is half and half. These are like word for word and thought for thought. This one just very old, but this one keeps old and advanced in years. If you look over here, the thought for thought ones, when Joshua had grown old, you're just trying to get the thought. What's the thought? What would Hebrews listening during the time of Joshua, when they read this book, somebody writes all this stuff down about Joshua, they say, here, people, come read this book. What would the Hebrews have been thinking? They would have, th when they heard, now when Joshua was old and advanced in years, what would they have heard? When Joshua had grown old. What would they have thought in their mind? Uh, when Joshua was an old man. That's what they would have thought probably. Okay. Now Joshua, would, the CSB tries to do a word for word and a thought for thought. Joshua was now old, advanced in age. <laughs> That's why you see the differences in the thought for thought versus the word for word. You might hear dynamic equivalence versus formal equivalence. I don't know. That's just what they call them over here, you know. All right. Old and advanced in years. Let's type that in over at our friend Bible Gateway. I'm not going to type in old. I'm not going to type in advanced. Let's type in old and advanced in years. Why would it say when Joshua was old and advanced in years? The uh, See, this is italicized. That means they have added the English word and. The word and wasn't in the Hebrew. So they put it in italics to let you know. So in the Hebrew, I guess it would read, now Joshua was old, advanced in years. Why do they add the, the and? Over here, they don't even italicize it. Now when Joshua was old and advanced in years. And look, in, 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 in this one, now when Joshua was very old, they, I mean, they don't even have advanced in years. Why do they add the and? It's understood. What's that mean? It's understood. I'm like, uh, if, I, if I'm calling to my brother, hey, dweeb, come over here. 
and somebody else says, hey, Dwee, BJ asked if you would please come over here. Did I say please? No, they added that. They assume that I'm thinking please. Now, of course, I call him a dweeb. The, the more proper would probably be like if I said, hey, dweeb, get over here. And somebody else said, hey, dweeb, BJ wants you to get over here now. He, it's understood. He added stuff. Here it's more a grammar thing. In the grammar, they might not use the word and in Hebrew. But when you translate it from the Hebrew to the English, it would make no sense if we just translated, now Joshua was old, advanced in years. It makes more sense to English hearers to put the and. It, the, the Hebrew readers, they would have known and, but it's not there. Just like if we translated stuff to Spanish from English, it'll change. It'll be a little different. So they would add words and take out words to try and understand what we're saying. So it's the same thing. Let's type this in. I bet old and advanced in years, since it seems like a, why, why, why would you say in ASP? Why would you say the same thing twice? Thirteen hmm. one. hey. Thirteen one, the first use of it in the Bible. Five results. Okay. When the Lord said to him, "You are old and advanced in years." Okay. Joshua twenty three. Uh, now it came about after many days when the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies on every side, and Joshua was old, advanced in years. Then Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders, their heads, and their judges, and their officers, and said to them, "I am old, advanced in years." <laughs> It's like it really wants us to know Joshua was old and advanced in years. It's really trying to tell us that. Okay. We can see even though there's 10 chapters, even though there's 10 chapters, he was already old in chapter 13, and he's already old, and then he's still old in 23. That might mean that, A, he was already old, and now he's really old. Or just because chapter 14 comes after 13 doesn't mean that there's more chronological time. Chapter 15 doesn't mean like, hey, four years have passed since chapter 13. No, no, not necessarily. There could be genealogies. They could be talking about, um, you're going to put a city here. You're going to put a city there. They could be talking about all sorts of stuff, you know. They could, they could give uh, descriptions of the land, which I think is what they do in Joshua. They could go back. Joshua could give a long speech between 13 and 23, which means the only time that passed was the amount of time it told him to, to give the speech. So, or it could have been really old then and then really old then. We're not going to look at all that, though. We can see that Joshua was old and advanced in years. First Samuel. Now, David was the son of Ephraimite, of the Ephrathite and of Bethlehem and Judah, the man whose name was Jesse. So David was the son of Jesse. <laughs> Jesse was. The Ephrathite of Bethlehem and Judah. That's who Jesse was. And Jesse had eight sons. And Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in years among men. So it changes it a little bit. Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in years among men. Okay. Zechariah said to the angel, how, how will I know it? Let's look at this one. Luke 118. Now what happened? Oh, and in the days of King Herod, King of Judah. Now, this is the New Testament. Joshua was hundreds of years, like over a thousand years before the New Testament. Language changes. Joshua was written in Hebrew, and they were surrounded by Canaanites with Canaanite dialects, with Canaanite languages. This is Jesus' time. They're speaking Greek. 90% of the world is. There are dialects and languages of Greek. May, uh, probably not Canaanite. Canaanites all got wiped out. A lot of them are dead. I mean, I mean, this is a long time. Like uh, kings such as Alexander the Great swept through everything during this time, conquered all these places. Rome has conquered everything. Rome, they speak Latin. So, I mean, different languages, different trade routes are going to come through. You're going to get different languages. You're going to start speaking differently. So just because, verse 18, 
says, Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. Are they trying to say the same exact thing? Not necessarily. But here it does seem like he is saying something similar. Let's see. In the days of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. He had a wife from the daughters of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. So Zechariah is a priest, got himself a wife named Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Zechariah were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. And yet they had no child because Elizabeth was infertile and they were both advanced in years. She was infertile and they were advanced in years. I'm guessing that means she was old. Now it happened that while Zechariah was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Okay, pretty cool. He's serving a court. He's serving before God in his division. There's a custom. He was chosen. He gets to go inside. Yeah, a lot of words there. A lot of it's like, what in the world is it saying? Basically, it's his turn to do the duty. And then, hey, we choose you. Ah, kind of like, kind of like it's your turn to play football. And then the coach says, okay. Now get off the bench and go in there and play. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, 20 people are chosen for a, for a group project. Hey, let's all get together in a group project. And then you say, okay, now it's your turn to take the task. Okay, so Zechariah uh, performing his priestly servant. Then he gets chosen to burn incense before the Lord. The whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering. Now an angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah standing at the right of the standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled when he saw the angel and fear gripped him. So all the people were outside. Zechariah is inside. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son. Look, Elizabeth was infertile and they were both advanced in years. J. Advanced in O oh, days. Mm many days uh do not be afraid uh you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice over his birth for he will be great in the sight of the lord he will drink no wine with liquor or strong wine you're the son of yours who's going to be born he will be filled with the holy spirit while still in his mother's womb he will turn many of the sons of israel back to the lord their god he'll return them back to Lord, and it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit of the power in Elijah. He will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit of power before him to turn the hearts of the father back to their children. The him is Jesus, but we don't know that at the moment, really. So, okay, here we go down here. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know this? An angel tells you something, you're going to question them, but hey, it's okay. It's okay. How will I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in her years. The angel said to Zechariah, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day when the son is born, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. They're going to be fulfilled. The angel's like, dude, it's going to happen. I don't care if your wife is old and advanced in age. I'm Gabriel. Look, look, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. And you're going to question me. Zechariah must have been questioning for the wrong reason. He's going to be silent until his baby is born. You know, even though his wife is old and advanced in years. Okay. Look at this. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondering at his delay in the temple. But when he came out, he was able to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. He's being a, he's taking a long time. Oh, there he is. He can't talk. <gasps> Must be a vision. Maybe there's more to it than that. I bet there's more to it than that. Uh, uh, let's see. And he repeatedly made signs to them and remained speechless. Hmm. So he's like, mm, 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 my, my, my wife, you know, uh, uh, the lady, mm, she's going to have a baby. Mm, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm an angel with wings talk. Mm, how hey, you make signs. I don't know. Hebrews make signs somehow, you know. Oh, 
Okay, well, we could look up old. We could look up advanced in years. We could look up uh, years, I don't know, you know, and see if they have to do with always with the same age. But for now, I think that's pretty good. See, we learned a lot. We didn't necessarily learn exactly. It's not like we learned everything we could have. But the point is to show you that you can go and learn and study for yourself. Yes, trying to teach you via way of example of me doing it. I give you the example. You go and study yourself. I think it works. We'll see y'all guys in the next Very Basic Bible.